Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Come on, stand up on your feet. Come on, we worship you, Jesus. Come on, come on, stand up on your feet. Come on, hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah.
presence. Let us clap our hands and give God a hand clap of praise this morning. This is the um, Sunday that God rose. I said, this is the Sunday that he rose. He, re he rose from the dead this morning. He has risen. He's no longer in the grave. So we should give him all the glory and all the honor and all the praise he deserves. Hallelujah. How many of y'all glad this morning that he rose for you? How many of y'all glad that he rose for you? How many of y'all out there um, that's watching this service are glad that he rose this morning? He could have stayed in the grave, but no, he didn't. He rose. He rose with all power in his hands. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah is the highest praise. Let us shout out hallelujah this morning because he's worthy. I said hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. I'm so happy this morning. I'm full of joy because he rose for me. I'm happy and feel full of joy because he rose for you. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you. We give you a hand clap of praise. We praise you with our mouth, dear God. Lord God, and we praise you with our bodies, Lord God. We praise you with everything within our being. Join in with us as we sing our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. In Jesus' mighty name I do pray. Amen. coming from the book of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. And it reads thusly. I'll be reading from the New International Version. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance to the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in all in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. 
just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went over and went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Blessed be the reading of Jesus' red word. You may be seated. Good morning to our members worshiping with us today in person and online. I am Elena McDaniel and on behalf of our pastor and Reverend Dr. Lamont Johnson, senior officers and members of the Western Baptist Church, we welcome all visitors to our service today. Whether you are worshiping with us in person or online, we are glad you chose Western Baptist Church as your choice. We hope that you will be so inspired that you will want to join us again. If you are new in the area and looking for a church home, please consider making Western Baptist Church your choice. We have a card to our Western Baptist Church family. Your kindness made a difference and your thoughtfulness touched my heart. Thanks for your thoughtfulness and words of care and concern during our loss of a loved one. Your gifts, prayers, text messages were a source of comfort during a difficult time. Know that we are thankful and appreciate your kindness. Sincerely, Audrey Bird and the McKinnon family. Please see Sister Trevia Booth immediately after service in the parlor for your child to grab an Easter goodie bag provided by the National Sorority of Phi Delta, Delta Kappa, an organization of female educators. Thank you and have a blessed day. Happy Easter. At this time, please join the drama, liturgical dance, and music ministries for a worship art presentation to celebrate Jesus, the risen Savior and King. Good morning, saints and friends. For a moment, allow your imaginations to go to a time that dates back to over 2,000 years ago, to the place where the manifestation of Jesus, our risen Savior's resurrection prophecy, was fulfilled. Hallelujah. 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 That's a little bit better. We'll work on it. <laughs> now, we're going on a journey. Do you see these little women over here? They have come to remind us of an early morning mission that transformed lives forever. You may be wondering where we're going so early in the morning. We are going to anoint the body of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, who is crucified and buried in a tomb just down the road. Oh my, the stone has been rolled away, but where's our Lord? Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you.
Saints and friends, were you listening? Were you listening? The angel just told those women that Jesus has risen. Pastor, I'm about to believe you when you say black folk done forgot where to shout. Okay? The angel just told those women that Jesus has risen. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? He got up. He got up. He got up like he said he would. God raised him up with all power in his hand. Amen.
Good morning, good morning. Let us stand for our morning hymn. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy and hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. Let us lift our voices across the congregation as we magnify and praise our Lord and risen Savior. He lives. I serve a risen. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 to celebrate the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And for that, we say thank you. We pray, God, that you would now touch these lips of clay. God, your word has gone forth in part through our worship arts, in part through the reading of scripture, and in the submission of our prayers in earnest. Now preach through me, Holy Spirit. For these brief moments, I shall stand. Holy Ghost, have your way. Preach me like never before. I pray this now in Jesus' name. And the people of God say amen and amen and amen. Come on, as you come down, sing that one last time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. celebrate God for our worship and arts, for our music ministry, our dance ministry. Amen. There he is. There's a word. Uh, I kind of just need to top this off for all that has been done, all that has been said. So Mark, the 16th chapter, the 11th verse. We hear this in our, see this reading and hear it. When they heard that Jesus was alive, and that she had seen him, they did not believe. Hmm. And, and I, I think after knowing that, that they still didn't believe, that there may have been some type of righteous indignation even with Jesus. I said, even though y'all didn't believe, still I rise. <laughs> that's, that's what I want to talk about this morning. Still, I rise. Thank you, Maya Angelo, for helping us. Many of you can already quote this. You know it. You, you may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You 
may trod me in the very dirt, but still like dust I rise. Does my sassinet upset you? Come here, sisters. Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides. Just like hopes springing high, still I rise. Did you want to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes. Shoulders falling down like teardrops. Weakened by my soulful cries. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard. Because I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still like air, I rise. Well, well, this part is just for those who are married, I guess. I don't know. Does my sexiness upset you, Lord Jesus? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my, well, y'all know that part. Out of the huts of history, shame, I rise. Up from the past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean leaping and wide, welling and swelling. I bear in the tide, leaving behind the nights of terror and fears. I rise into a daybreak that's wondrously clear. I rise, bringing the gifts. This is why I needed to pause. Bringing the gifts. Do you see it? Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and the hope of the slave. Will you just help me and say, I rise, I rise, I rise, and somebody didn't want you to. <sighs> oh, y'all don't hear me. Somebody. <laughs> While you were here and thanking God for your comeback, somebody was satisfied with your setback. While you were here with your positive self-esteem, with your strengthened self-worth, with your ability to know that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, there are those for some reason, you can't, you won't, or you shouldn't. But still, God, who created you to be and to do what you have been called and purposed to do, amen, somebody gives you the strength to rise. During this weekend, this is the one time where all three Abrahamic faiths are at a place of celebration or festival together. During this weekend, Passover and Easter, uh, Resurrection Sunday and Ramadan collide where those of the Islamic faith are celebrating a time of prayer and fasting, of renewal and reflection, while those of the Jewish faith are celebrating the Passover, their God deliverance story. And while we who are in the Christian faith celebrate, hallelujah, the fact that our Lord and our Savior, though he was crucified and buried, God raised him up on the third day with all power in his hands and we hear the songwriter helping us that says God sent his son y'all know it come here Gathers they called him Jesus he bled and died and then they go to that chorus because he lives I can face my tomorrow because he lives all fear is gone because I know who holds tomorrow my life is worth the living just because he lives but the reality of the matter even as we look beautiful in here today and I know you already look beautiful online watch this life has thrown us some curveballs in the last two years come on if you don't put your hand up here you ought to put it down here there there are many of us over the last two years that have lost loved ones that some of us in here have been sick amen with sickness with coronavirus in our lungs and attacking our brains but we're here there are some in here and on line that had to
to bury loved ones from COVID and other things during these last two years. The last time we were able to come together on Easter. My God. But God has a way that's mighty sweet. God has a way, watch this, that allows his promise to go forth. And God cannot renege on his promise. If God said it, he's going to do it. If God has declared it, declared it, it's got to come to pass. So let me say sidebar, you can't know what God has said if you don't know his word. You got to be in his word. You got to study his word. It's not just enough to hear somebody preach, but you've got to have that word in your heart. You've got to know that when the enemy comes in, I know his word. Come on, somebody. God will raise up a standard before us. We've got to know his word. That sickness is all around it, around us. He was wounded for my transgressions, uh, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon me and by his stripes we are already healed. We've got to know his word. Some are arguing a recession coming. Come on somebody. You can't find a new car. Help me Holy Ghost. The price of every food commodity has gone up and now Twitter, Twitter is about to be sold to the highest bidder. I can't hear nobody pray. And all of this is going on. And somebody says, well, what happens if we go into a recession? When you know God's word, you will thank God you are recession proof. I can't hear nobody pray. And you can declare my God shall supply. Somebody ought to help me preach like it's Easter. I mean, say it for yourself. God my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. And watch this, with us knowing God's word, with us knowing all that God has for us, with us knowing the very promises of God, it is amazing, watch this, that even in our own resurrection story, even in our own celebration of coming back, there are going to be folk around you <laughs> who will doubt God's ability ability to do what God said he would do. Mm. This is why you got to be careful who's around you. This is why you got to be extraordinarily careful who's on your threads, who's come on, in your inbox, who you are responding to, who you call friends. I need y'all to hear me because they're, everybody around you doesn't see the victory in your life. Everybody around you doesn't see that no matter how bad life can knock you down, God still has the last say. I mean, is there anybody in here that can find a hope right there that can tell God, thank you, that my haters don't have the last say, the naysayers don't have the last say, and show up the enemy doesn't have the last say, but God has the last say. Y'all have seen the text. This is where Christianity comes to its most high point. This is not just a holiday, y'all. This is a holy day. I'm, I'm going I'm to say it again, y'all. This is not just a holiday. This is a holy day. Listen, after this morning, you go, you be with family, but I believe if somebody is Christian, amen, it should be more than just a bump. It should be more than just a stop. But this should be where we are refocused. Hmm? This is where we then look at our faith, at our faith systems, and say, Lord, help me. I, I've been struggling with this. It is my prayer for everyone in this room that we mm, do more than just claim Christianity on a survey. But that we do our best to be Christians in our hearts. Oh, sweet Jesus. And with all of that, on the third day, after Jesus was crucified, after he was whipped with this about eight foot, I mean eight inch, excuse me, eight to ten inch short whip with cowhide and some would, would say parts of a rock and, and, and metal in it so that it would dig the flesh off of his back. 
It was a horrible death, y'all. It is not what you see painted uh, in this Euro European uh, uh, portraits of Jesus where he is there, sweet and nice, and just three pieces of blood uh, dripping down. No, y'all. It was thorns from a particular type of rose bush. Wasn't short, but they were long and jagged. Platted on his head. Mm. Scholar Josephus said that, that, that they did not, his mother nearly recognized him because of how bad he was beaten. And he died. He was not in a coma. Come on, somebody. He died. And there, for so many around him, their hope died. But watch this, hope is not based on, watch this y'all, your lowest point. Hope is based on what you believe the other side of your lowest point is going to be. Mm. There are many that's in our country today that's, that are receiving nice, happy Easter sermons that's not going to help them <laughs> In trials, in tribulations, in pain, in cancer, in divorce, in struggle, in low self-esteem, in low self-worth. But if your Easter message, if your Resurrection Day sermon is not connected with the fact that this was the lowest point in Christian history. And the reality is Jesus had already told them, if I... If I'm crucified, if I die, on the third day, I'll get up with all power in his hand. And God raised him up, and he arose with all power. The Bible says they came. And the one woman that had been there, Mary of Magdala, y'all know the story. We just preached about it the other Sunday. Here, the Bible says that she went, and when she told the story, they didn't believe her. Almost like what women struggle with now. I can't hear nobody pray. I need y'all to hear me, hear me what I'm saying. Black women, particularly, morbidity rates in pregnancies are, are still higher than almost any other race because oftentimes there are persons in the medical field that don't believe your pain, don't believe your pain tolerance, that don't believe. But I'm so glad that when nobody else will hear you, no one else will listen. When God hears and God answers prayer. So there were doubters around. And Jesus had been pressed down to his lowest, down to the ground, below the earth. And there were doubters. I'm there. Y'all, it's not bad enough <laughs> that you done lost everything. It's not bad enough that you're low as low can go. But then what pain it must be to when God gives you a resurrection, folk don't believe your comeback. <sighs> There's some people that <laughs> as long as you broke, busted, as, and, and disgusted, as Maya Angelou said, listen, as long as you messed up, as long as you are out there, as long as you down, there are some folk who are okay. Come on, somebody, with you being underground. There are some people that are okay with you struggling. There are some people okay with you being battered and broken. But there are some people who are going to doubt your comeback. And I guess I, the Lord sent me here to the church that I pastor to tell you, you ought to tell God thank you. That if nobody else believes me, I thank God I know my own story. That if nobody else understands how I can still stand after being knocked down, I know my own story. That if nobody else can see how I can smile with a pink slip in my hand, I can smile making less than somebody while I'm working my way up. I can't hear nobody pray. I know my own story and I know my own word. So how then do you rise above doubt and doubters? That's the question today, y'all. How do you rise? Because it's action, y'all. It's about what you do. Somebody says, what I do. It's what I do. How do you rise above doubt and doubters? First, it is simply by knowing your purpose. Mm. Let me pause right here to say, you've got to know what God has called you to do. 
Listen, if you've come to church for a good shout or just a good hand lifting and then you don't leave without knowing that God's put something in your hand after you lifted it, come on somebody, to turn around and give somebody else something from your hand, I think we've missed it. If we can come and dance but don't have the feet to walk to help somebody get to where they need to be, then we've missed it. We've got to know what our purpose is. Jesus understood his purpose, and it was clear. The Son of Man had to come to die. Y'all, this is our salvation story, that he had to take on human flesh because others could not do it. He had to be the ultimate sacrifice. When you know your purpose, no one else can move you from your death destiny. Whew. When you know your purpose, when we teach our children they have purpose, watch this, they won't listen and buy into the lies. Come on, come on young ladies, that their purpose is tied to their figure or to their stature or to their complexion or to their hair texture. But when our daughters understand their purpose in God, they won't be defined by some rapper or some artist. They won't be defined by the words some little boys got to say. Our young daughters can and walk with their heads held high and not allow the world to define them. Come here young brothers. When our young men when our young kings as some folk would say know their purpose they won't be defined by their hormones or their appendages. I can't hear nobody help me preach. They won't be defined by their bravado and how strong they are or how tall they may be but they'll be defined by their purpose. I need a parent to Help me tell God thank you that my child has purpose and no data set, no statistics. I can't hit nobody. We'll define what God has created for my own children. But I need somebody over 12 to know that God's purpose don't just stop with children. But God has a purpose for every single one of you. And the enemy may try to block it. The devil may try to stop it. But when you know your purpose, you will rise again somebody say still I rise still I still I rise you've got to know your purpose but you've got to know your presence Whew. somebody just holler out I'm here and y'all didn't even say it like you was alive I mean somebody ought to just say it with indignation and just say I'm here I need some country folk to put something on it and just be like, child, I'm here. Listen, dead folk can't say what you just said. Y'all gonna catch that in five minutes. <laughs> the fact that, watch this, Jesus, his very presence, I love it, y'all. The empty tomb, I love it. Going from the cross to the tomb, going from the place of sacrifice, the place of death and torture, of finality, to the place where hope was reborn. He arose, but watch this, he showed up. Mm. You're rising again, your comeback is not just for bragging rights. God didn't allow you to go through this pandemic and come out just to say, I made it out and I got something to show for it, but it's so that you can tell somebody else as bad as it was if it had not been for the Lord on my side. It is your job then to tell what nobody else can tell and that is your story. Come on your story ain't got to be a bestseller but you know your story. Your story doesn't have to be trending but you ought to know your story and when your story simply ends with the fact of the current chapter that you are still here, your presence testifies that God kept you when you couldn't keep yourself. Your testimony is that you've got a presence that negates the very lies of the enemy that says your last knockdown was your knockout. But God allowed you to show up on another Easter Sunday to declare that God was with me, that God never left me, and my presence testifies that that God cannot lie. 
Here it is, and I'm at my last point. Your presence testifies. There's a something that is called the ministry of presence. I like how Dr. Stephen Davies said it. He made it very simple. He says, everyone in the body of Christ qualifies to be an expert assistance to the suffering. You don't have to be brilliant, persuasive, articulate, or experienced. You can be involved in what he called the ministry of presence. Listen, your resurrection, come on somebody, may be the very thing that helps somebody else through their crucifixion. Your comeback story may be the very thing somebody needs. Your ability after a death to say that God was there when I couldn't call on nobody else. It may be the very same thing somebody needs when their mother, when their child dies. And watch this because you've been there. Sometimes you'll know exactly what not to say. I need y'all to hit me what I'm saying. Is there anybody in here that thank God that in your lowest point that there was somebody that showed up that didn't make the matters worse, but God every now and then just sent somebody just to show up at your house and not give you churchy platitudes, but just sit down and be present. And that's all I'm telling somebody. There's somebody around you that's going through hell and high water. And the hell and high water you've been through has given you the authority to show up at their house and just sit down. And your presence will be a witness enough to their suffering that says if she can make it, if she can make it, if she can make it, if he can make it, I can make it too. Somebody ought to tell God. I thank you for his prayer. You got to know the power, the, your purpose. You got to know your presence. But simply and lastly, the way you ride, <laughs> y'all, I feel all right, above doubt and doubters, is you got to know your own power. You, you got to know, you got to know what you got. Come here, young adults. Come here, young adults. Come here, young adults. This is not a physical power. This is not something that you walk in, you know, you got your swag on. No, 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 no. <laughs> Deja, this is, this is that type of internal authority that says, what? God has given me one he ain't gave nobody else. Now, I know, I know, I know y'all like, well, no, other people got my gift, but nobody has your unique combination of story and pain and comeback and gifting and anointing and struggle and conquering and setback and comeback. Nobody has your you like you got your you. Oh, come on to hear somebody. So, in other words, can't nobody do me like I do me. So, you do me and let, oh, come on, come on, somebody. You do you and let me do me. I need somebody to help me preach. I'm going to say it again. You do you and let me do me. But when you know your authority, when you know what God has put inside of you. Watch this. Yes, you'll study to show yourself approved under God, but then you'll show up to that GMAT. You'll show up to that GRE in preparation for, I'm talking to somebody here today, and you'll know the power that God put in your brain. Y'all aren't going to hit me preach right here. When, when you know what God has put on the inside of you while others are, are talking you down, are pushing you down, you'll know the authority and the power on the inside of you. And listen, when you know God's power, when you know what God has put on the inside of you, 
It's right here when you know him for yourself. I got to get out of here, y'all. When you know what God has imparted on the inside of you. Matter of fact, Paul said it like this in Philippians 3 and 10. He said, y'all trying to know everybody else. Y'all trying to know Jada and Will. Y'all pray for them. I can't hear nobody pray. Y'all trying to know everybody that's going to give you a hookup. But this is how I feel. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. And I need to know, is there anybody in here can tell God to thank you that I may not know everybody and I not know everything but one thing I do know is that God is still on the throne I may not know what the stock market is going to do I may not know uh -huh, what Bitcoin is going to do but one thing that I do know is that the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still water somebody say I know something I know that because God is the greatest power that we shall not be defeated can I preach like it's a resurrection day and I come to tell you the fact that he God up with all power in his hand lets me to know that I've got the authority to have a comeback for myself is there anybody in here that can testify I've been knocked down but still I rise the enemy trying to, to destroy my purpose but still I rise somebody ought to text that to one of your haters the fact that I'm still I said I'm still here and after all the hell I've been through I still have joy cancer tried to get you diabetes tried to destroy you but somebody ought to slip one hand up and say still I rise that grief said you'll never get back together again you'll never be able to smile again but I've got somebody that had lost this year that can declare that my God shall wipe away all tears from my eyes and still I rise I rise over depression I rise over oppression can I get one sister to live Give your hands and tell God thank you because though people said you're going to make less, I declare by the power of God your income, your level, your authority, your position is getting ready to rise. Somebody ought to say it for yourself. I rise. I said I rise. I said I rise. You Yes, I rise. Yes, I rise. I've got to go to my seat. But I hear the old saints saying it. Something like this. They will say, I rise to give honor to God, who is the head of my life. I rise to testify. I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave. I I rise to tell God thank you that my sheets were not my winding sheets and my bed was not my cooling board. I rise to tell God thank you. I've got the activity of my limbs. I've got clothes and I'm in my right mind. Is there anybody in here to say I rise? I and ain't no devil, ain't no devil in the hell.
hell can stop you now. Somebody shout yes, shout yes, shout yes. I rise. Somebody ought to open your mouth and tell them thank you. Yes, yes, yes. And because I rise, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises, his praises, yes, yes, yes. Stand to your feet. If you can. And still, West Durham, and still we rise. And we give God praise. As we're standing on your feet, if you can. If you are able. We stand to celebrate a risen Savior. And to offer you first... Watch this, there's going to be a lot of churches that's using this Sunday as a day to try to get members. That's not our primary call, y'all. Our primary purpose is to make sure that when you die, you have a home in heaven. That's my job. It's to give you Jesus through his word. For you to make a decision yourself. The day has passed and gone where mama grabbed you by your ear or pinched you and told you to walk down the aisle. That day is done, y'all. If you're here or online and you've never accepted Jesus as your personal savior, won't you please come that you might accept him today. If you're at home or online, and you want to make that choice today. We're going to all pray together this prayer of salvation. Every head bowed, pray with me if you can. And won't you pray that somebody who is listening and struggling can hear you with them. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come on, pray with me. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I confess with my mouth. I believe in my heart. I believe that he lived. I believe he bled. I believe he died. I believe that on the third day, God raised him up. I believe Jesus ascended into the heavens, sits at the right hand of the Father. And I believe that one day he's coming back for his church. And upon the profession of my faith, I am saved in Jesus' name. If that was you that prayed that prayer for the first time, won't you come meet us? If today was your day of salvation, won't you come meet us? If you're online, just type in the line, I'm saved today, and we'll respond to you. If you're here, you're looking for a church home. You are in the right place at the right time. Won't you come be a part of our family? You can join on your Christian experience. You can join as a candidate for baptism. If you went away and are coming back home, you can come home today. The doors of this church are open. Hallelujah. Is there one? You have won it all? Is there one? That wants to, I see you. I see you walking. I see you, sir. I need somebody to open your mouth and tell God thank you. Say you are. God bless you. God bless you. I've been waiting for you. Hallelujah. Is there another this time? There is room. You may be seated. You 
have won. really known you as DJ. Amen, somebody. And, um, and, and when I first met him, he was, Deja, wave your hand. He was, um, you know, they, they, they booed up, amen, and, and had been so for some years, amen. Faithful, praise God. Um, no, seriously, I thank God for that, amen. They have a beautiful relationship. But I knew him only as DJ 2. Y'all gonna catch this in five minutes because Deja went out and found her a boyfriend with the same nickname as her daddy. I said, I'm confused, y'all. I don't, I don't know how to handle this. I don't know how to. <laughs> but Doriel, that's it, right? Amen. I wanted to say your name correctly. Amen. We have West Durham coming today to join West Durham on his Christian experience. Brother Doriel Covington. Come on, let's thank God for DJ today. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, this is already home for you. You already know, and um, I, I've been praying as God expands us, and this is the second Sunday we've had a young brother joins. Two Sundays in a row. Amen, somebody. And we ought to tell God, thank you for that. And so you know we are a church that believes in working. Whatever it is, there's, there's room. And um, in the days to come, we're going to be really expanding how we're going to come back fully, right, into our worship and ministry offerings. And so whatever your gifts are, whatever your anointing that God has put, because I know he has anointed you, DJ. I know that. And so we want to let you know you are free to do what God has called you to do. So upon the completion of your membership, new members class, you'll have all rights and privileges of every member of West Durham. So it gives me joy on this Resurrection Sunday to tell you these words. Welcome. Somebody come on, give God praise for him one more time. Amen. To all of our family and friends, we're going to prepare, even online, to give God what belongs to God. And I believe some money will come then for our altar call prayer um, after that. So if you're home and or here, You've not been here in a while um, because of work or whatever it is. Uh, for COVID purposes, we have changed our offering uh, 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 procedures. So we have receptacles, secure receptacles at all of our exits. 
we pray that you would now know that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And listen, what you want the church to be, let me say this. You have the authority and the ability to make it. West Durham family and friends, hear me good. You don't have to go to anybody else's church to have what they have. Not when God has blessed us with so many gifted people. I can't hear nobody pray. But we need your support. We need your attendance. We thank God you have been consistent in your giving. I ain't, there's no question about that. So we need you to continue to be consistent in your tithes and in your offerings. And we thank God we've not had to beg, and I won't ever do that. But I give God praise for a church. And even in a pandemic, you have been faithful in giving to God. And we celebrate Jesus for that. So will you stand on your feet with your offering in your hand? And we're going to make this declaration unto the Lord. And then we're going to have our altar call and then our benediction. With those gifts lifted up, we see our four ways to give. In person, online, on the mobile app, and by mail. And so we make this declaration, not a dead I.O., but a seed I sow. I'm sowing where I'm growing. I'm sowing into good ground. And I expect a supernatural harvest. In Jesus' name. Lord, bless the gift and the giver. Listen, as uh, Minister Yolanda will come and pray for us, we want to tell God thank you. Brother Jeff's daughter, Sister Tiffany Williams, has been waiting and waiting and waiting it was a liver right for a liver transplant and some would say she was not a proper candidate but God worked that out I can't hear nobody pray and on yesterday she went through a liver transplant somebody tell God thank you Jesus thank you Jesus so we gonna pray today together as a family in faith. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Let us pray. Father God, we come this morning, dear God, just to say thank you. Lord, we come to praise your holy name, Lord, for transplants, dear God. Because, Lord, we know if we can, you can do it for her, you can do it for somebody else, dear God. Lord, we thank you for healing, dear God. Lord, there may be someone among us, Lord God, that's getting ready to go through a surgery. There may be someone, Lord God, that's going through a sickness, but we know you as the healer, dear God. And we're declaring and decreeing right now in the mighty name of Jesus that they're healed, Lord God. Lord God, on the profession of their faith, Lord God, we're connecting ours with theirs, and they're healed right now in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we come praying for those that might be bereaved, Lord, some that are hurting, Lord, some that may have mental issues, Lord God, that they can't seem to get a handle on, Lord God. But we know that you're a mind regulator, and we say thank you. Lord God, we thank you for those, Lord God, that are watching right now that may have issues, Lord, that they can't seem to solve. But we're coming to let you know right now that God is the one. He is the way. And he can touch and heal any situation. On this Resurrection Sunday, God has risen. He rose for us, and we thank him. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, I do pray. Amen. And for the sake of our attendance today, after benediction to our ushers, we will ask that everyone sit back down. And we're going to ask that we do our previous pro, um, COVID protocol just so we can make sure that there's not any major um, uh, congestion. Amen? amen and amen. Listen, only God can bless. So we give you his word today. You're blessed in the city. You're blessed in the field. You're blessed in your going and in your coming. So I speak the blessing of the Lord into your life and I declare you are the head and not the tail. You are above and no longer believe. And now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, and the love of Christ, may it rest, rule, and abide, both now, henceforth, and forever, and ever, and evermore. And we all say,
we gather again, God be with you. We invite you with children to stop by the parlor and make sure your children are blessed. Thank you so much, Sister Trivia, and to your educator sorority, amen, that has come to bless our church. We ask that the outside aisles please rise and be governed by our ushers. Till we gather again, till we gather again, God be with you. Till we gather again, till we gather again, God be with you. May he give you, may, may he, he give, give you his love, give you his kindness, keep you in perfect peace. God be with you. So we For the center aisle, please rise. 